بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد The 27th juz or para of the Quran continues on with Surah Al-Dariyat and so in the previous session when we completed uh, the 26th juz uh, we ended off where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam and how the guests came to him, the guests were the angels and he honored them and slaughtered for them and then the story goes on from the beginning of this juz to mention how uh, these angels told Ibrahim alayhi salam that they have been sent to basically destroy the people of Lut uh, towards the end of this surah, Surah Al-Dhariyat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, commands His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to remind the people, to remind them, وَذَكِّرْ وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَى تَنْفَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Remind, for indeed reminder, is uh, of benefit to the believers. Uh, and then right after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that He did not create us the human beings nor the jinn except for one purpose and that is for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the purpose of life is to recognize the creator and to single him out in worship uh, after that uh, comes surat uh, at-tur surat at-tur and surat at-tur basically uh, consists of uh, affirming the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and affirming resurrection, life after death and basically refuting the mushrikun and uh, they're uh, basically responding to their denial of the Qur'an and their denial of the resurrection and their denial of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam In this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically uh, mentions uh, several times or, or rather uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, several uh, questions uh, there are several questions in this surah uh, that come one after the other uh, they are questions for the mushrikun and for the disbelievers uh, related to uh, basically the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala among these questions, among these questions is, uh, you know, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he mentioned uh, that were they created, were they created on their own, were they created on their own without, you know, anyone to create them, or were they the creators, or were they the creators. This is a very, very strong uh, refutation of the atheists who claim that you know, uh, we came out of nowhere, uh, we were created from nothing, and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks this very basic question that the, the mushrikun uh, of that time, they knew the answer was obvious, that no, uh, we were created by a creator. And there are several other uh, questions, uh, you know, uh, here. Uh, these questions led one of the companions to actually embrace Islam when he heard these verses, and he was Jubair ibn Mutayr. After that, we have uh, Surah Al-Najm. Surah Al-Najm uh, also revolves around uh, the Quran uh, and how it is, uh, how you know what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam speaks is is nothing but revelation from Allah. Wa ma yantiqu an al-hawa. He does not speak from his own whims and desires. In huwa illa wahyun yuha. It is nothing but a revelation that is revealed to him. This proves that. Whatever the Prophet ﷺ came with, whether it be the Quran or any legislation, any legislation, anything that is mentioned in the Sunnah, that uh, can only be uh, from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, then it is a revelation from Allah. It is not the Prophet ﷺ speaking on his own. Uh, and so, in this, in this verse, is a, a, a refutation of those who claim that we can suffice with the Qur'an and that the Sunnah is not necessary. 
uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the Prophet does not speak from his own whims and desires. So whatever he says, whatever has been recorded in the sunnah, in the authentic ahadith, then it is also a revelation that, he, that we are commanded to follow. Uh, also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refutes the mushrikun uh, in their claim uh, to the various gods that they claimed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them as being uh, or, or as following uh, nothing but doubt. They follow nothing but doubt. Uh, they follow nothing but uh, delusions. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that uh, a delusion uh, is nothing compared to the truth. The truth is something that is certain. As for doubts and delusions, uh, then that is what uh, the disbelievers base their belief upon. Whether it be the mushrikun, who associate partners with Allah, or whether it be the atheists, who uh, claim that there is no God. Uh, their beliefs are nothing but doubt and delusions. Uh, after that, we have Surat Al-Qamar. Surah Al-Qamar uh, starts by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning the great sign or miracle that took place uh, for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that was the splitting of the moon and so uh, among the miracles that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, showed his people was the splitting of the moon the moon had split into two halves and uh, the rest of the surah, once again, uh, continues on the same theme of uh, the Qur'an uh, and how it is a revelation from Allah, uh, refuting the mushrikun uh, and also mentioning some of the, 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 what happened to the people of the past, the nations of the past, Ad, Thamud, and the other nations. Uh, and one of the things that Allah mentions here, towards the end of the surah, is Asking the, the kuffar of uh, Quraysh, are you better than those who were perished? You are no better. And if you persist in your ways, you will also meet the same fate. Uh, also, we have in this surah, several times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that he has made the Qur'an easy. He has made it easy to recite, to read, to understand, to reflect over, to act upon. All of this comes under uh, the general idea that Allah made the Qur'an easy for us. But the question is, and this is what Allah uh, mentions right after, uh, right after that, فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرٌ Is there anyone to pay heed? Is there anyone who will actually take this Qur'an and you know, make use of it as a guide for him in his life? Proving that only a few people actually benefit from the ease that Allah has made the Qur'an into. After that, we move on to Surah Al-Rahman, which is one of the most significant surahs in the Qur'an. It is a beautiful surah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off by mentioning that He has taught us the Qur'an. And so one of the greatest blessings of Allah is that He has sent us the Qur'an and taught it to us by teaching it to the Prophet Sallallahu and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam teaching it to us. And then Allah starts mentioning several of his blessings. And along with that, throughout this surah, there is a reminder for us to be thankful for the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So which of the blessings of your Lord will you deny? Then towards the end of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions several, uh, uh, several uh, examples uh, of the pleasures of the people of paradise. The many blessings that they will enjoy, Allah mentions them uh, towards the end of the surah. After that, we have Surah Al-Waqi'ah. Surah Al-Waqi'ah uh, basically describes to us that there are three categories of people. You have Ashab al-Yameen, the, 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 the believers, uh, the, the people of the right, and then you have As-Sabiqoon, Al-Awwaloon, the foremost, not just the believers, but a group from among the believers who are ahead of the game. They are at the forefront. They are winning in the race. Uh, and then you have Ashab uh, al-Shimal, the disbelievers, uh, and the munafiqun, and those who are basically destined for the hellfire. 
and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them in the beginning of the surah then at the end of the surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about the time of death and how uh, you know uh, what happens at the time of death and how you know as we are looking at the person dying uh, Allah asks can any of you stop this from happening you cannot and then Allah mentions these three categories of people again and mentions uh, you know uh, their fate where each one is destined to then after that the last surah in this uh, juz is surah al-hadid surah al-hadid revolves uh, around basically the uh, issue of uh, spending in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spending from our wealth from our money for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also uh, upholding justice upholding justice uh, and <clears throat> one of the things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in this surah is the light that the believers will be given on the day of judgment uh, so that you know it can be a, a way for them to see and to perceive uh, and how the hypocrites uh, will call out to the believers and say give us some of your light because they will have no light uh, and also one of the things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in this surah uh, is for each and every single one of us to really really reflect on uh, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he says Alam has the time not come for the believers for their hearts to soften for their hearts to soften uh, for the reminder of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the time not come for us to uh, you know, allow our hearts to soften at the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when this Qur'an is recited. And so the reality is that our hearts have become hardened. As Allah mentions, like the, the Ahlul Kitab, the Jews and the Christians, uh, their hearts became hardened. Uh, and so, uh, you know, they don't, they don't benefit from the reminder uh, of the scriptures and the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we are supposed to be different. We must soften our hearts and allow the, the, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to penetrate our hearts and for there to be a change in our lives. With that, we come to the end of this juz until the next session. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.